Hey everybody, welcome to the Have You Ever Played podcast, the only podcast sponsored by Crab Rangoon Dip. I'm Matt, aka Matt Fondude, and who are you? I'm Ryan, and I have stories to tell and <laughs> and and fables on the 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 fiberglass insulation that I've just been putting up this morning. Um, mm-hmm. Namely, as I mentioned earlier to you, that it fell on my face, and I am now dealing with potential insulation health problems yeah moments before the filming the pod like literal s- minutes before the pod i had this, to deli- all went yeah. down. i had to tell you I, I will be a little bit late i just got insulation on my <laughs> on my skin and face so um you know what the worst part is it wasn't even the the owens corning pink panther insulation it was just oh. some off brand whoa 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 well is it is it still pink no, <laughs> no oh, why would brown. you buy that <laughs> Because who cheaper? buys brown insulation? I guess, but the whole it's, point it of insulation. Your walls. <laughs> I know, but it's to tempt you. It looks so delicious and pink oh, and inviting. It's, it's the temptress. It's Why would they? Fun. Okay. Oh jeez. I want to dive into this. Why would they design insulation? Something that you should not let children interact with. Something that we both discussed that, as children. Many adult figures in our lives were telling us that if you touch insulation, you instantly die. Yes. Why did uh, they was... design it to be I... so inviting to so children? Is is Pink Panther uh, Hanna Barbera? Is that uh, it's it's one of those old cartoon like <laughs> figures? But uh, who, whoever whoever owns the rights to Pink Panther was like, I, I bet you they made the insulation pink because it was just the material they had for whatever reason, and. Somebody like Hanna Barbera or whoever was just like, I got a golden advertising opportunity for you, and it stuck forever. Yes, and they're like, I and then I bet it was at that point like, oh well, now we can make it in other colors than pink. They're like, nope, brand recognition. It needs to be the Pink Panther like special cartoon insulation, children's character insulation. Yeah, it, it looks like <laughs> edible for children. It should slap a label on it that says, children, please eat this. Suck it down like a Nintendo Switch cartridge. They should they should just go, like, they should double down on insulation branding and just, like, be like, this is, all right, we have the Coco Melon sponsored ins- insulation. <laughs> like, they're, they're targeting them younger and younger. <laughs> they have uh, insulation that's, like, flavored, like Mr. Sketch markers oh, it's like God. scented insulation oh, Ooh, it smells like an orange peel and glass <laughs> it smells like mm. iron and orange peel oh my gosh and what what kids would do with those markers in elementary school i mean you know they when they would sniff them they would like like they were trying to like feel something when they when they would sniff that like we've talked like- i think we've talked about mr sketch <laughs> scented markers every single time you've been on the podcast i i'm getting deja vu i genuinely think that has happened every time I don't remember talking about. I <laughs> swear we talked Mr. about Sketch? this. <laughs> I, it's like Mr. Sketch, I think. L- l- they still sell them. I'm looking it up. Live auditing on the pod. Mr. Sketch markers. Yes. Sent it. <laughs> Who thought it was a good idea to have scented markers? To just be getting kids to smell markers, well, which okay. then leads to smelling Sharpies. It wasn't. I bet you their intention was not for kids to be huffing like markers like that. But they would say, I I wonder if the non toxic markers just like had either no smell at all, so you wouldn't know if they're open, or like I don't know, some kind of like really terrible smell. And they're like, well, we could put you know like candy <laughs> smells in them instead, just so that way when you're using them, you can tell when it's open and when you're writing. And children are smart enough not to put them inside their nostril, right? Like, can I can I run that back real quick? Did you just say that the the reason markers have a scent is to tell if they're open or not? Is is that incorrect? Were they are they designed to have a scent? No, 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 no. Okay, all right, but it's it's not like they're designed to, but it's a feature. It's an unintended feature. Like, okay, yeah, okay. I've yeah, I've 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 been like, oh, it smells like there's a sharpie open, and there's like, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, oh, but I, I I took that as oh yeah, they're, the R and D team is developing new smells <laughs> so that whenever like if a if a person who cannot see is opening a sharpie, they know that it's a sharpie due to smell. It's like an accessibility feature. So for blind people, they know they can tell what they're writing by senses smell. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. that was yeah, the party. insulation. We, we've talked about Mr. Sketch Markers, I swear, every time you've come on this podcast. I don't know how it comes up every single time. <laughs> I, I just have that Mr. Sketch Marker energy. That's so strange that it just... It all, whatever. <laughs> anyway, we have to move on from... This is a video game kind of podcast, and I think we need to talk about some of the topics at hand. Okay. And we've one of the topics... Our frame. We've built we've our built frame, frame here. We need to we need to fill it with some kind of thermal barrier to actually mm-hmm. make this podcast have some stu- substance. You could say and, that gaming talk is the insulation of this podcast. The Pink Panther insulation, indeed. Yes. That's that's the transition. There we and go. And do you know what else has insulation? Elden Ring. No, it makes no sense. Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree. You know what else uh, has installation in that you have to well, download it for three hours? There you go. You're right. I'm glad you, someone can carry these transitions. They get better as the podcast goes on, I've been told. But um, yeah, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. I just want to mention uh, this game briefly because I haven't played too much of the DLC. Now, Ryan, we talked before the podcast. You have not had that much experience with Elden Ring in general. I've played like five to ten hours of it really really enjoyed everything i played of it thought man this game's great i understand why it won all the awards and i i missed out on this when it came out because i played it like earlier this year late last year ish um and then i put it down and just said god that was a really fun game i should play it again sometime and I, i don't really have a reason for not playing it i just i just didn't i don't know i think you can always go back at some point oh yeah and play it um i'm kind of feeling the same way that you felt and bouncing off the game toward the dlc a little bit mm-hmm. i really enjoyed the, the base game and played through it and did a lot of side quests and a lot of content so much so that i feel like i kind of am done with elden ring but i bought the dlc and i've played maybe an hour of the dlc i haven't encountered any boss fights yet but I am running into some of the issues people are having with the DLC currently. One thing being the performance of Elden Ring in general is kind of Mm -hmm. an issue. I didn't really have a problem with it before. I have upgraded my graphics card since originally playing Elden Ring. And it appears there's no DLSS options. And there's 60 frames a second cap in the game. So you're basically running around at 60 or less the whole game and there's a lot of frame drops and performance issues which i'm i'm kind of used to in elden ring at this point but it really shouldn't be like that it's it takes away some of the the charm of these crazy open world areas which look really nice but you know they're not optimized very well um another thing people are noting that I've kind of run into is that the game, the DLC feels like it's for super end game characters where the base enemies and some of the bigger like wandering field enemies have like 400,000 health Mm. and it feels like you should probably be stronger than you've ever been in a souls game to take on the DLC. But there is also items around the map that seem to, only affect the dlc area where if it's like it's like using a upgrade for your estus flask in the dark souls but it it makes it so the enemies take more damage in the dlc area so i'm wondering if that will balance out the gameplay if you find all of those but Uh, anyway it it feels like more elden ring yeah i with (laughs) with very little experience in in the game i i think i'm qualified to say It'll definitely balance it out, I think. That's that's yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very familiar with the game balance. It's um, the insulation of, of the DLC. You could say that. You could say that. Yeah, that's um, pretty much all I have to say about of the DLC so far. I haven't played that far into it. I I think that it is more of Elden Ring, and I might have enjoyed it more when I played Elden Ring for the first time. I think if you go into it now and you're it's your first playthrough, it might be the best time for you to play it. Because it'll just feel like a part of the game. It just expands the main game. Mm-hmm. But having beaten the game months ago, 
coming back on my old characters like well I'm, I'm you know i'm returning to something i've already beaten and i've always had that issue with souls dlcs anyway so well at my current pace doing maybe five to ten hours every six months i'll probably get to the dlc by like 2035 but <laughs> well i'll tell i'll let you know i'll let you know yeah when you come on the pod and you're talking about all the insulation that you're putting up because you got into it, it's like a hobby now for you Yes. You're going around installing insulation for other people. I, I'm just a contractor. Just a general contractor at this point. Mm. Um, this, this whole insulation talk really reminds me of that Queen story that you wanted to tell. Well, before I get to that, I was I was going to say, before we get off of Elden Ring, what I could do is next time I'm going to be on this pod, I'll play another 5 to 10 hours of Elden Ring in advance, <laughs> and I'll talk about my experience in those 5 to 10 hours. And then we'll everyone, everybody will get my Elden Ring journey in piecemeal. Uh, it'll be like a ten year saga of like somebody completing Elden Ring and having no time to do so. You joke about that, but there are several YouTube people that I watch or people who play games and stream them, and they treat Elden Ring like that, where mm-hmm. they have probably still ongoing playthroughs from the release, and I don't. I get when you're streaming it, it's one thing because when you're playing it by yourself, you can kind of binge a lot more hours. But if you're streaming hours and hours and hours of Elden Ring and you're actively talking to chat and you're actively talking the whole time, that's like crazy amount of uh, time that you're just yelling and doing all these weird things. Wait a minute, I'm getting breaking news. Uh, I mentioned the Queen story as a joke because this was a this was a long running we actually forgot the story from a podcast but Ryan is typing in the chat I think I remember the queen story I okay think. what is the queen story all right so it wasn't a story about queen because it was a story yes. all right so the it band was a, queen yes it was a segue about you talking about uh, I remember we were having a discussion about the first songs we bought on iTunes <laughs> Okay, yep. And I bought and, the album of Queen. Yes, I remember that was what you said. And I, I I remember when I got an iPod for the first time, I didn't have any iTunes gift cards. I didn't have I was I was like I don't know, when when the iPod Nano, the latest iPod Nano had come out. And I I got that. I was like in middle school or something. And uh my parents were saying like Hey, so if you want songs on this, go upstairs and look around through the CDs that we have if there's anything. And I I was like, before I do that, there's one song that I really want on my iPod. And I had to convince them that it was worth the $1.99 to buy five minutes of music uh, in the final countdown. <laughs> that was, by that was, Europe? Yes, by Europe. Uh, it, it, the, it, all it was was just that I remember that was the first song I had, but be, for a while... That was the only song on my iPod for like a month and a half. So I would just be like, yep, I've got my <laughs> iPod here. Time to listen to the final countdown by Europe. Um, so the Queen story the whole time was actually about Europe. Yes, it was. Wow. But we've really put a bookmark on that chapter. That's not the phrase at it all. Was, it was so underwhelming. But I mean, the idea was just that it was a seg. It was like, it was just kind of an anecdote to add to what you had mentioned to me before which was that your first iPod album was was what? Oh, it wasn't my first iPod album. It was a mistaken album. So I wanted to buy probably just like We Will Rock You or We Are the Champions, you know, mm-hmm. one of the kid-friendly Queen songs. Yes. And I accidentally purchased the entire album. So what, it must have been something where the album, I think Fat Bottom Girls was on the album. What album is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't what know is the Queen fat- like that. I <laughs> I don't know Queen like that. I'm looking up the Fat Bottom Girls album. So it was the... Oh, why is this not as easy? To... Why is this not as like, easy to find? Did you get like Bicycle 2 on there? Like I think I did, yes. <laughs> Regardless, I bought an album and I thought it was a song, but I ended up buying a full like $20 album or something. And what did you think? Like, did you think like, man, this is... I... This song better be worth it. It was a misclick. It wasn't. I didn't actively want to. I was like, "Oh man, we are the champions." I mean, that's a twenty dollars song. 
<laughs> that's that's worth twenty for me. If I've ever that's heard worth a song, like twenty in two thousand eight dollars. Like that's like three hundred dollars. Like, yeah, it's it's like that's like four of mom's credit card now. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that was. Uh, do you know what else you can use mom's credit card on? Let's get back on topics. Buying a uh, banana NFTs on Steam. I, all right. Let's let's talk about this one. Let's get it. Let's get get this one. <laughs> let's over get into head. it. <laughs> so there is a rise of NFT adjacent games now. Technically, Banana is not an NFT game. It is a game in which they made a bunch of PNGs of bananas and made them all marketplace items. Well, they okay. So there's a game on Steam called Banana. It is the number one played game on Steam as of this pod. It is a free game. It is created in Unity with two f- assets they paid for on the store. One of them is like a UI pack, and one of them is a Steam Marketplace integration app thing, okay. plugin. So the entire game is every three to 12 hours, you click on the banana and you can get a Marketplace item, which is like a trading card, basically. And then you can sell it to some sucker online to try to make money. So it's basically like an NFT. Now, I got all this information from a very wonderful video that sums everything up way better called Banana, the fourth fourth most popular game on Steam. Please don't play this by a YouTuber named Jaun, J-A-U-W-N, Jaun, Jaun. When you asked me if I watched that video earlier, I thought you meant the like promotional video on the Steam page for the banana game. No, no, no. I didn't know okay. there was one. What does that look like? It looks like a yellow background with a Unity rendered banana on it. <laughs> and there is a mouse cursor that moves throughout the screen and clicks on the banana a bunch of times and says, at Discord, generated bananas you could get. Like, that's... So That's I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the details from that video. Please go watch the original video if you want more information. It's really well done. But basically, there the banana game is you literally leave it open and then you can sell all the bananas that you gain on the marketplace. And now some of the bananas, most of the bananas are three cents, but some of the bananas are rare And they might go for like $12 or something like that. Now, a lot of that pricing is probably based on this being a new thing and people are, you know, suckers and buying it. Mm -hmm. Some of the other pricing, here's where some of the scumminess comes in. The developers can generate as many marketplace items as they want. So they could also just generate rare NFTs of these bananas. They can just generate bananas and sell them on the marketplace. So... There is a possibility where maybe no one's actually getting these rare bananas and they're just generating them all and selling them. And they're also just raising prices and and manipulating the market. And it's really sketchy. That sounds, Um, yeah, that sounds like it makes sense. There's also a bunch of bot accounts in other countries where US dollars are worth a lot more and they're mm -hmm. gaining a lot more money off of selling, you know, bananas for even four cents. So the moral of the story is, you're not going to make any money. You, the person listening to the podcast, if you download this, you will not make any money off of it. It is a waste of time. Um, it is the people who created the game are probably raking in some pretty good cash. And this is not the only game that has done this on Steam. There are several games that are like this on Steam and actively being top charting games. So we'll see if Valve cracks down on it because their stance right now has been they're allowing uh nft and crypto games on their platform what a time to be like a child on steam you know like when i when i was this age on like my i got i was on my mom's laptop for a while and then i got my own laptop when i was like 12 13 i it was just like this hand-me-down thing and like i was let me tell you i was i was I was clicking on that like free iPod free, like you know, like all of that stuff. Like what a time to be a computer illiterate child on steam and being like, I can make money. I can make money off of a video game. Like this, th- this, this is, I, I will, I'll never have to get a job. I, I, could, well, here's, I, I here's can be 12 years old making money. With banana. If I was, younger and didn't have disposable income or a job 
I would have 100% been all over this because the chance of getting like $10 to buy a game when you don't have a credit card and you know you have to rely on Steam gift cards or mom's credit card, mm-hmm. you're going to use these games and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get it and I get why a lot of people are playing, but it really is scammy and scummy. Yeah. And hopefully, I hope at a base level, the game is just, you know, scamming in the terms of the marketplace stuff and not an active like Bitcoin miner. But in the video, they kind of go into it's probably fine. The, the application is probably safe, but still other games on Steam could also be, you know, not safe. And there's a whole market of people making games just to sell weird stickers and things to put on your Steam profile. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll just be games that exist to just give you a bunch of weird meme PNGs to put on your profile. It's a we- Steam is a weird marketplace right now. Yeah, I'm just. I mean, I understand they. Di- I don't know. I guess I don't know exactly why they started doing the trading card thing with the marketplace. But like, I know the whole intention at first was like CS:GO and TF2 stuff, right? Like, because that was kind of their whole thing. Like, that's all I used it for when I was playing TF2 in high school, and I was just like. It was like brand new. I remember the the whole beta thing coming out and being like, look, you can sell stuff now for pennies and exchange your you know, small items for each other. But I I don't know. Well, Valve gets a cut of every sale made on the marketplace, too. So they basically just get free money from any transaction. I, I, if I was making a system in which every single transaction on my marketplace, I get a cut of it. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to have as many things to buy. Even if it's like three cents, they still get a cut of every transaction that it goes on. There's probably millions of transactions that go on all day. True. So the Valve is the real winner at the end of the day. But do you know what is not the real winner? Uh, Redfall, a game, a game, a game in which I looked at this headline, okay. right? And I don't know anything about this actual game besides the fact that i remember seeing it maybe at a game awards or one of those award show announcement shows Mm -hmm. and it's the four player vampire left for dead type game that i saw and i was like wow that looks interesting kind of it'll probably be be bad i don't know you know what it sounds like already to me it sounds like uh what was that show that was like like the the who would win battle show on like spike tv or something of like like who would win a vampire or a hundred zombies like oh yeah okay wait, wait, it's, like greatest warrior yeah something or... like that or it's on like i i have no idea it's on one of those channels and just you I were correct that, about spike tv uh, it was on spike tv it was on really spike funny. yes <laughs> it's the listen that's the joke channel you could throw anything in there but um i it's i remember seeing an episode of like like four vampires versus a thousand zombies or something like that and i'm like that's it that there you go that's redfall just just go 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 watch that episode you'll do the same get the same experience i don't know enough about redfall to not confirm or deny that but i feel like that's correct that sounds right my only understanding of it is what you just said so i'm i'm hoping that's on the mark so here's here's the reason i wanted to even talk about this because we both didn't play this game Okay, but I do think that it is so they they, they canceled the DLC. They promised a DLC for to finish the game. It it was going to be this really big DLC and they actually started charging for it. So people bought the DLC and the the studio who made Redfall, which is Arcane Austin, which Mm -hmm. they created Dishonored as well. So that's like their big game you would know them from. They got shut down by Microsoft, so I'm assuming they were acquired by Microsoft or they were owned by Microsoft, and they just shut the studio. And what really sucks is they they actually planned to release this DLC, and they were going to do it, but they just can't finish the DLC now. So they had to refund the players of the game, and there were some editions of the game with the DLC that were like $100 editions, and they just had to fully refund it. So it really sucks for the people who enjoyed the game and the studio... Yeah. It seems like it was really out of their hands and it was kind of a Microsoft decision, which I I guess they were probably losing money because no one really played this game. But you'd think they would just let them finish it because they were in 
it was being if if they're taking money for the DLC, it mm-hmm. feels like it had to have been close to coming out. But it, it seems like what they did instead is they're working on an update to allow the game to be played in an offline state, which is good. So at least the game won't be fully dead, like an anthem or something like that. Mm-hmm. It just really like I don't know the game, and I guess it didn't do well. But I feel really bad for the development team. Because it seems like they really were trying to push out something that would help the game. And then they just got like, nah, just like, don't even try. Like, good luck. We'll just throw it in the trash. That sucks. Um, well, yeah, big, big L for Redfall. I, at least to this day, you know, maybe, maybe Redfall is, is going down the drain like this. But at least Spike TV's Greatest Warriors fully released that episode. And it's still available somewhere out there on the internet. So. The concept yeah, is the, never truly lost. I I don't think the game. Okay, uh, now now that I think you're convinced <laughs> that the game is like this, I, I think I don't think the game is like this at all for, I, for the listeners. Have you played it? I have not. No one's played. It. Apparently, not. No one has played it. So then the they're shutting. They shut it down. The, the greatest game never played. The greatest. What if it's the best game ever? And the marketing <laughs> just, is just bad. We just uh, they're just talking about it like it's. But just no one knows. Nothing. No one knows. You, you know, I have a conspiracy theory and. I think I've told you about this, about the greatest game that no one's ever played, about the game that I hear everyone online talking about. Maybe not as much recently, but when I was actively like on the Internet up until about like 2017, 2018, I used to hear people talking all the time about how amazing Chrono Trigger was. Chrono Trigger, but yes. Chrono Trigger. Who's who's played that game? Every, oh, OK, here's the deal. everybody, everyone, everyone's played that game. OK, yeah? here's, here's the deal. <laughs> I agree with you. I have... Okay, but I have a nuanced take on that. Okay. I agree that no <laughs> one's really played that game. But, and I've, I, but I've played the game, but I bounced off of it super hard because I didn't find it fun. It's the greatest game no no one's ever played. It's <laughs> So I've at least played it, but I didn't enjoy it. And I like JRPGs, and I know it... I, I don't know. I feel... I feel like you're correct though, because I was just about to defend it being like, I know that it's a really good game that people all like, and I can't say anything bad about it, but you know what? I agree with you right in to H Y E P podcast at gmail.com. If you've played the game, if you've played I, we're not going to get any trigger. letters. <laughs> Chrono trigger. Cro- Chrono trigger. Sorry. Uh, oh, if you've my. played this game on the DS, especially <laughs> the, D- the I thought it came version. out on the SNES. It did, but there's a DS port. Oh, okay. it's actually good. It doesn't matter. Um, if you've played it, <clears throat> And enjoyed it right in to hyeppodcast at gmail.com. I I do think you're kind of right, though. Like, I don't think I personally know anyone who has fully beaten that game. I, You know what it was? My theory on it is that it was, like, one of the first JRPGs to really, like, get critically acclaimed in, in the U.S., I, at least in some capacity. Um, I, I think it's probably just among one of the first of that type of series and people were like oh wow that's really cool I, if this is what a jrpg is i love jrpgs and then they just like construed that as like chrono trigger is the greatest game ever made like they and it's just someone discovering that they like the genre of jrpgs like i don't I couldn't i've never played it i couldn't tell you if it's the greatest game in the world i just i just feel like i hear constant praise about this game and i can't name anyone who's played and beaten that game well, it's not a traditional JRPG either. Like, the combat is different. So there's nothing quite like it. So that is an element that I will say makes it different from a standard JRPG turn-based game. There is, it is does have different gameplay, and the mm-hmm. story does seem interesting, but the story does not hook me very well. You know, it's not, it's not for me. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who said they've played it, you know, but I, I kind of agree with that. But I, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. I'm sure we've all heard the YouTube chill music video game compilations that have Chrono Trigger, Chrono Trigger music mm. in them. Sorry, I that listen. That prefix is is to me a type of chronometer. You know, chrono mm. chronological mm. chronology. I mean, you could be saying say it chronology. More no one's played it, so we don't know. It's the red fall of you know JRPGs. What? I think you're wrong. I think it's I think it's Chrono. <laughs> sure, Chrono Trigger. <laughs> I, I think this is you propagandizing me. I've only heard Chrono my entire life, but I think you 
Well, one of those things is you might be technically correct, but it's stupid. So we'll <laughs> say Corona Trigger. Do you know what else is stupid? Your Taco Bell story that I have no context for. So that's the transition you get. Enjoy your segue. So I found this on Tom Scott's newsletter. I, I've been <laughs> okay. getting this for I've been getting this for a few years, and I there's interesting links in there. And there was one. Sorry, w- sorry, I inter- inter- interrupt. Is is it just a newsletter of links to think to things? <laughs> yeah. <is> <laughs> yeah. Wait. wait. It's <laughs> okay. I don't know. The man finds interesting links. And emails them to people who want to see interesting links. I, and I you're sub- you've have sub- you're, you've had a subscription to this service for like a decade plus. No, no, I said a few years. Oh, like okay, two, okay. three years, maybe a little longer. I don't know. He, he just has a newsletter. I don't... It seems like a weird service. Well, do you know do you know who Tom Scott is? I've I've heard the name. Let me look it up. He's the he's the guy that does like he goes places and talks about infrastructure and linguistics and the guy oh, on no, YouTube. Uh, no, that... never mind. I thought you were talking about um, I thought you were talking about Tom Ska. No, who... no. <laughs> uh, uh, the, like the ASDF. I don't think movie? I would subscribe to his newsletter. <laughs> I'll be honest. I th- I really thought you were from, you were saying like yeah fifteen years ago when I saw <laughs> when uh, I saw die a- potato a- a- I was like that this this guy have a newsletter yeah and I'm like I need I need some more die potato I, I genuinely thought you're like, you're like you're just getting things where it's just like guys check out this new Flipnote Hatina video <laughs> I I saw dude I I saw the uh, oh my god like I'm out here watching is he Salad Fingers too. No, that's that's David Firth. Oh, I wonder if he has a newsletter. <laughs> I don't know. He he gets work. He gets work still. He's doing stuff. That's that's what I think. When I watch somebody who made an animation, I'm like, they got a newsletter. Sign me up. Uh, sign me up. <laughs> a newsletter of useful links. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Okay. So Tom Scott had this newsletter thing. He he still has it. I still get it weekly, and it's just interesting links and interesting mm-hmm. stories and just. You're laughing at me. I see you, and I'm just like, <laughs> well, what is this weird? weird? It's, so fr- <laughs> it's so frequent. I don't want to see any any kind of spam in my email. Like, I don't want to see it's anything. It's not spam. I signed up. For you it. opted into spam. You opted into spam from I Tom get... Ska, the animator on okay. YouTube's newsletter. Maybe, maybe I am using email wrong, but I get like three emails a week. And they're all I get important. thousands, okay, and they're well, all unimportant. Okay, well, I I have correctly filtered my email over years upon years, and don't sign my normal good email up for garbage like at stores. So I maybe I I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> I allow this man to send me links once a week for free. All right, I don't pay him. I'm surprised you don't pay for this service. It seems like such a good service. I would pay good money would for you? this. You just, yeah, said I would you, pay. you just said I signed up for spam. I have a service for you. I, I'm going to introduce a service where they send you links via the mail. And then you, you, open, up a, a, you open up a letter. You and it's a them. eight and a half by 11. No, it's handwritten links. <laughs> H- on an eight T- and a half by 11 piece T- of paper. P- dot dot slash slash. I hope this finds you well. H, it's like an HTTP, but the H is like a really ornate square, H- like H- Elizabethan <laughs> H. Spencerian <laughs> script. HTTPS. Yeah. It's it's like a monk scribe. www.duck.com slash. I found an article about the big duck that arrived in the river. They had a big festival where a big rubber duck arrived in the lake. Arrived I ha- upon the River Thames. And I laughed and laughed. and I, I and laughed then it's a, with folly and I, they, I danced in the square. Below is a sketch. Wait, they write out the HTML. <laughs> Here is the HTML for the webpage. They, they hand draw like... I, in case that doesn't find you well, I've hand drawn a code that you can scan with your QR <laughs> scanner. With your QR scanner, <laughs> you, you load this code into your Gutenberg press, <laughs> and it'll print out a copy. 
<laughs> It'll print a copy of the images. Wait, Most I've fine. sent you the plates. I've sent you the plates for <laughs> your Gutenberg. You... <laughs> <laughs> I, it's oh, like a geez. it's like a subscription service, like a loot box, but they send you uh, a <laughs> Gutenberg you press, press plates. plates. <laughs> It's a, that's a, now that's a service. When's the printing press coming back? The, the I, guy, look, there's a guy on YouTube. Records who came it. back. Cassettes came back. When's the printing press coming back? Okay, I I honestly think that newspapers are kind of coming back for hipster culture. Where mm-hmm. I saw a man, I saw an old man at a venue at a, mm-hmm. at a concert venue, and this old man. Well, he had he had perfect hair, by the way, for his age. He was an old man with very nice hair. It was a very it was very style, like like probably in his eighties, but with like a full head of hair, which is to rare. To whom this may concern, I saw a man at the music festival the other day, an well, elderly he was, man with perfect he, hair. Well, he was waiting. Yeah, he was waiting for the show to start, and he go does a leg cross. It takes yeah. out a full newspaper, but but it was like the venue was it was sitting. And it was, mm-hmm. there was no space. So it was really cramped on the left or right of you. But he takes out a full newspaper and starts reading it. And I think he wasn't <laughs> reading it. I think he was just showing off that he had a newspaper. I think he genuinely liked the aesthetic of having a newspaper. <laughs> I don't think he was reading it. I really think that he was just like, oh, like it fit his outfit. It was part of his outfit. <laughs> and I was so, really so transfixed sorry. on this. You like, you look at the article and it's like, peace in vietnam <laughs> yeah no no it was like it was it was also weird because it was modern news so it was like it was like like a random fox news thing or something it, it was basically like sensationalized news where it was just like your kids are gonna die and it was just like the headlines and like a thousand letters and or it's just like oh new iphone i'm like reading about like the new iphone in a newspaper at a concert at a concert, yes. <laughs> With in between, hair. during the intermission, during the intermission, he's <laughs> taking out a full newspaper that he had to um, carry. So he had to carry, walk into the venue with a full newspaper. When um, when Oliver Tree went on his first tour, I went to that show because I I was just like, the tickets were like sixteen dollars, and I'm like, what would that be like? Mm-hmm. Like I Oliver Tree's fine, but I you know I was he f- I, he fell off. Twice, like yeah. seven times, but like, he's, he's <laughs> and, and then he keeps crawling back. <laughs> he's looking yeah. like a completely different person. He's um, gonna release another version of the jerk for the ninetieth time and sp- speed it up. Nightcore. He'll- don't think he'll ever get back to the the days of giant vape on the bench with the bowl cut. But uh, <laughs> that was that was when he. Yeah. Anyway, I was at the Oliver Tree concert, and there was we were it was an opener, and this guy was just doing like DJ sets. I wasn't the biggest fan of him. I was in is a standing room. I'm in like the second, third row of people. I pull out my phone and start playing solitaire, <laughs> and he <laughs> sees me. <laughs> that's so mean. He's that's so the meanest. That's the meanest game to pull out <laughs> because that's the international sign of boredom. <laughs> that's when you have nothing else to do and you're like in okay. an office. That's worse than playing any other game because that, I... that is. J- I was actually on a solitaire kick at that point. That's I an was... aggressively mean game to play <laughs> if someone's doing something. Oh my god. That's like I doing know, cricket I know sounds saw, with your I mouth. I know he saw my phone too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that his DJ is worse than solitaire, is what you're saying. It's but less solitaire engaging isn't than that solitaire. Bad. I, I like solitaire. I know, but, but in the cultural zeitgeist. Oh, in the In the geist. I Solitary guess <laughs> is is a, is a, is is the shorthand for boredom. <laughs> now play Minesweep. Yeah. Minesweeper is an exciting. That's oh, a, that's a. I love that's Minesweeper. A, that's an exciting game. I'd have played Minesweeper during Oliver Tree. I think. Yeah. You know what's funny? Anyway. He broke his leg on tour during that set, oh. and he was in a wheelchair doing like wheelies and stuff. <laughs> I feel like that kind of goes more with his character. It does. It absolutely does. Um. Anyway, Taco Bell. Yes, the original topic. Let's get get into I, it. All right. So I got this link in Tom Scott's newsletter that said an unusual heist has taken place at Taco Bell, and I'm like, all right, I'm clicking on. What's that. a usual heist? A you uh, like beans? So, someone stealing a gordita. Be- uh, beans. Just just beans. Okay. Like, like like from a can, like off a tree. Beans can be what? Where do beans I think, grow? I, I think we be- had to reset. Beans uh, we, gotta re- a- we gotta reset do- the podcast. We're gonna reset the whole do- podcast. Do we beans grow in a bush? Time. Do they grow underground? 
We're getting too distracted. Tree? What is this? Who stole the beans? Who stole you? the beans? Do they grow for me? Ryan, please. Who stole the beans? <laughs> who stole the beans? We've been talking about this one topic for Nobody. an hour. We haven't talked about it. Nobody stole the beans. But what they did steal was uh, canvas print art from Taco Bell that a guy, like, so there was this artist. And I can't even describe these paintings. <laughs> it looks like bro. ass. I'm looking at it right now. It's they, kind of, it's good I don't way, love them. but. I'll be honest, but. Um, this guy made all these paintings and they're, they're supposed to go with like the Taco Bell, California, like zany aesthetic that they got going on. Um, and he, I, I guess like the whole beginning of this article was talking about how it's like, I never expected them to approve this, but he got the corporate green light. Uh, fast forward, like a few years after he made these and they started rolling these out. Uh, they had these in Taco Bell, like in the store or whatever. And when they were remodeling a lot of these, um, they just started taking these things down. And in some Taco Bell locations, they were finding that the art was just gone. Like somebody just stole it. Uh, soon they found out. And like, it was a thing now that these paintings, people have them on eBay for like 10 grand. By like the way, prints of these, these things. These are, yeah, these are canvas prints. These aren't yes, original. They're not paintings. even originals. But. I, I they're like the the article said like the the sold listings usually reach like 300 to 700 but some of them are like in the thousands um i i don't know why these are so beloved but it got to the point that like people were like like scoping out taco bell restaurants and like like casing them to see if they had the the, the prints and like just like getting like employees to let them in after or something and like you know do, literally doing like a heist like being like, hey man, I'll slip you twenty bucks if you let me like come in for five minutes real quick and take this painting, like that kind of thing. Like, uh, there was a uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of them that people are saying like shift leads would like tell people like, don't take these, be on the lookout. People are trying to take these, and then they themselves would steal them, <laughs> so they just oh didn't God. want people to like steal them. I, it's just ridiculous, like. These these stupid prints from Taco. People are stealing Taco Bell art and selling it on eBay. I love the poll quote in this article, which I think I'm not a type person, I guess, but I I don't know if this quote is using the correct quotations because it's not using quotation marks. It's using just the singular mm -hmm. quote mark, which I don't know what that particularly means. But I think they're not using it correctly. But in giant bold text, it says, "I never expected this to happen." <laughs> giant tech i never expected this to happen what a quote i'm really nervous about this there's so many quotes oh my god deep in the trenches of reddit there are threads where people are selling the bootleg art what the hell oh my god yeah. i've never been inside of a taco bell really i've only been to drive through there's only there's only one local bell to me and it's like kind of out of the way I've never entered a Taco Bell in my entire life. I've just now realized that. Um. Okay, so I know there's. I know in our in our landscape, you look you look you look a bit foolish to to defend fast food establishments these days. But I'll, I'll be honest. I I'm a ta I'm a Taco Bell fan. You're big on the bell. I'm big on the bell. I, I'll, I'll say I'll say it. I'll you say live it. moss. I do live moss. But I don't eat beef, so any complaints I've heard about Taco Bell has to do with their beef. I sub everything for just refried beans. That kind of so goes hard. I, I have a completely like vegetarian Taco Bell experience. I'm not a vegetarian myself, but I'm not eating any meat from there. I I think it's really good. I, if you really like refried beans, like just not getting meat at all, kind of takes out the worst component of the Taco Bell. I would think. I don't even think their beef. I mean, their beef is technically bad for you but well, it, i think it tastes good do you know why people don't like taco bell beef and why it's like considered really bad um they use end of life cattle oh so it's cattle that are already like need to be put down because they're too old oh they so it's ethical perfect easy perfectly well, <laughs> ethical beef i'm not gonna At comment moment, on that but... i love beef. i mean the beef industry is the most ethical industry it is it is I, I don't even want to touch this. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe with that old that old beef. It's that old, mature yeah. beef, experienced is, beef. Taco Bell beef is very mature. Um, but I just I don't yeah I don't know I um, yeah. 
I've there's a lot of hidden tech at Taco Bell. Everybody knows about Baja Blast at Taco Bell. But my friend has a she introduced me to a a Taco Bell drink that you can only get at Taco Bell that you can mix it. And it tastes exactly like a fruit gusher. Okay. It's, ha- it's half Baja Blast, half of the like strawberry or maybe even like maybe a quarter ish to just under a quarter of the, like strawberry lemonade tea. And then the mango fiesta the rest of the way, you know, you got it right. If it's like, like pale red, kind of, it's like a little bit pale red, a little bit golden. Uh, it's really good. If it you sounds like. to me like you mix seven types of sugar together to make a new yes. type of yes. power sugar. Yes. That is exactly what, what happened. But, if you're going to Taco Bell, you telling me you're 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 that worried about your diet if you're going to Taco Bell? That's true. That's true. But I mean you're throwing in some sort of soda element. You're, you're throwing in some sort of Coca-Cola freestyle machine potion making 10 flavors, you know. That is I, when I go to Taco Bell, I'm not thinking about flavor. I'm thinking about how much gorditas I can gorge down my gullet. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay, me too, but um speaking of taco bell as well not to continue plugging taco bell uh you know there's a secret item you can get right now and it's it's a crunch wrap but instead of a hard tortilla like crunch wrap thing inside it's a giant cheese it that sounds awesome <laughs> it's, yeah it's only on the mobile <laughs> app <laughs> i haven't had it what, but are they, I, what do they call it i don't know i my, like a my cheese rat dude my <laughs> cheese wrap <laughs> cheese rat my, <laughs> yeah, my cheese rat <laughs> my my friend it talks about it every time we bring up getting food he's like dude if we go to taco bell <laughs> they have <laughs> they, they have a giant crunch wrap they got a giant cheese in the crunch wrap <laughs> <laughs> what a weird what a weird <laughs> snack item <laughs> i don't know i haven't had it i want to try it but i thought the cheese it was like the white collar cheese snack because you got the goldfish for the kids you got the cheese nips for the work, the blue collar, the working man, cheese nips, and then cheese it, especially cheese it extra toasty. That's that's for the 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 one percent. That's the elite. I don't know about that. I think so. I think that's probably how that works. Are you telling me a cheese? It's not a working man snack. That the cheese nip is is for the working man. I've never had a cheese nip. It's it's the it is the blue collar cheese it. Where do you, where do you find them? In the so certainly not at Aldi. The, they're on the they're on the bottom shelf underneath the Cheez Its. I actually was a Nips guy myself. All right. They had fun character shapes like SpongeBob. I'm and a, I'm a frugal shopper myself. All right. I, I I if if there's cheaper Cheez Its, I'm probably gonna look at them. At they least. don't they don't taste like Cheez Its. They taste like more like Goldfish. That's the I thing. See. They they are more aimed toward children, so they taste more children. They they suit a children's palate. <laughs> they suit, refi- they suit a child's palate. Yes, a cheese it is a refined sharp cheddar palate. I still just I still think you're putting too much importance on the cheese it. I mean it's a Taco Bell. <laughs> well try try a nip. I'm I'm saying in the world of cheese based cracker snacks, try a nip and then you'll understand what I'm saying. So you want to talk about refined snacks? I'm thinking pita chips and hummus. That's a refined oh, snack right there. Oh wait, actually, how about the Rockefeller snack of the cheese snacks? The those like freeze dried actual pieces of cheese, like the wisps. That cost like seven thousand dollars. Have you seen those? No. They're it's just a piece of cheese. Like it's it's you know like how when you cook like a grilled cheese or something, or like imagine like just putting a craft single on a stove top and what that looks like, how it just hardens <laughs> Wait, on a hot they, stove top. Yeah, they it scrape melting it off. Onto the burner, yeah. like they okay, scrape oh, okay. it off and they put it into a bag. <laughs> and it's like a keto snack. That's what they are. And they're like greasy, but they're healthy in or healthier, I guess. So, wait, I thought you were—I thought you were making a joke, but no, you really mean. Look up cheese a, whisk. Throw a craft single onto a hot stove top look, burner. Look up what they look like. Cheese I've whisks. Had them. Yeah, look them up. It's literally oh, what you get. It's the residue of cheese. Oh, it's spelled wisps with an H. Whisps. I, I guess wisps. Cheese wisps. I got a good picture for you to, that demonstrates what I'm talking about from wholesomeyummy.com or wholesomeyum.com. I. I'm actually not seeing. No, oh, no, here you go. That, that see, whoa, is that not exactly what I described? No, that is exactly what you described. But I just that looks. Oh god, this one's disgusting. Look, I gotta. It's you, too yellow. 
It's way here's too a, yellow. Here's a nice tryptophobia picture of it. That looks disgusting. Uh, I actually can't view this. I, I, according according to uh, Microsoft Edge, because that's the only thing this uh, podcasting app works in, uh, HTTPS colon slash slash handwritten www.allrecipes.com is not available right now. I have an oh, HTTP oh, error of right. 400. Don't worry. Every single image of these all looks the same, so I'll send you another one. It's the most... Uh, welcome to the... This, I like how this is like a segment of the, the audio-only podcast. The cheese wisps section. Look up cheese wisps, people listening to the pod. They're disgusting looking. I've had them. They're not very good either. Okay, this one... Okay, I keep getting the same image. These right, really are mind. like expensive, bougie cheeses. Yes. Um, anyway, I don't remember. I was going to talk about something else. I completely forget. I'm skipping the entire Nintendo news this week. We're just going to talk about other stuff. Okay. Speaking of weird things. Oh, my God. My uh, segues are really off this week. So I got a spam call recently. I wanted to tell you about this. Okay. Because I think it's really funny. I never answer spam calls. But I, I was expecting a call. You know, like sometimes you're expecting a call, so you just answer anything. Yeah. Um, so I answered a spam call, and a voice came through the microphone of the phone, and, and they said, hello, Mr. Gene. And I was like, Gene? Where are they getting that? And I hung up, and I was like thinking about it. I'm like, Mr. Gene, where did they get? And then I remembered one of my email accounts, which I think has my phone number. Uh, I think it's like an alt account, and my name on it is Mr. Gene Nerick. <laughs> so he was like mr nerick mr gene gene nerick i'm like so this man um, unironically called me it was a real person and was like oh yes this person mr gene nerick is a real man i i mr gene i I, lo- I love this because not only do i have a story that also is the complete like equivalent to this i also have a spam email that has a stupid name and it's anon why <laughs> It's not even like clever. It's just first name Anon, last name Y M O U S. Oh my god, that's Anon great! I, I, I also have so I have a bunch of emails for different like podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my email from a podcast is John Podcast, which is Good. fine. Love it. But Mr. Podcast, my one of my alt emails, I just spammed on the keyboard, so the name is Asdad Asdad. Basically, it's like A S. It's like A S. It's like Asdad Asdad. And so people will email me and call me sometimes. They're like, Mr. Azad, Azad. And I'm like, hello? <laughs> Mr. Azad. Um, so on the spam call thing, I actually got a really funny uh, spam call recently as well. My car was at the mechanics for an, an inspection. Um, and I'm just, I'm at work. I'm waiting for the call back to say my car is good to go. It's like 2 p.m. ish, which is usually when they call. I get a call from the same town that the mechanic is in. So I'm like, oh, okay, I don't have this number. I'll answer it. It could be them, even though I have my mechanic in my contacts. So I would have seen it, but I wasn't thinking at that time. And I answer it. And this guy on the phone, he's like, hi, uh, my name is Henry. Um, do you live at my address? <laughs> uh, why? I'm like, why? And he's just like, oh, uh, well, I'd like to buy your house. How do you uh, get your number? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Just a man named Henry. Or I don't even remember his name. Is fucking Henry? It was... he pr- that that sounds like an oil tycoon, and they were gonna offer you like a bajillion dollars for that land. No, there's probably oil. I don't care what they're house. gonna offer me. I even if they offer me a bajillion dollars for my house, I have to buy another house, which costs a bajillion dollars. But what so, if what if they what if there was oil under your house? What if you struck black gold under your house? Well, if that was the case, then my well pump would be pumping oil, and I would be dead. Oh, that's a well pump it's not an oil pump Checkmate. only oil pumps pump oil why would that's... they have an oil pump if they could use they would just call be called a pump i see yeah this is stupid um okay moving <laughs> yeah, <this> yeah. Is... <laughs> let's no. talk about insulation some more no um if i i actually <laughs> would, you, would you like me would you like me to bring up one of the things that i mentioned to you the other day <laughs> Wait, don't you have a mysterious question you wanted to ask me on the podcast? Wasn't that something? What is way your level earlier? of exposure to, uh, f- like forklift and warehouse equipment? 
Well, I'm a Costco executive member, so it, as that, an operator, I I've not, I don't have a forklift operating license, so I have not operated a forklift. Okay, I'm just just thought I'd. Uh, was was that the whole bragging. question? Yes, because I thought I'd do a little uh little little bragging here. Are you forklift and certified? Maybe soon. Oh my god! Maybe what, why? Soon. Because I work in a building that has a warehouse. Oh. I might be able to get involved with that. Maybe. Don't know yet. I got could inspired you, by watching a video about forklifts a few days ago. Could you, in theory, could you, in theory, go to Costco and ask an employee and show them, hey, I'm forklift certified? No way. I think liability, well, you, you would have to work there. In theory, if you if you brought your own forklift, if you bought a forklift at Costco in bulk, you bought like okay. a ten pack of forklifts. Is your forklift considered a prosthetic or possibly something that could be covered under the ADA? Yes. What if it's instead of like a wheelchair, you ride around your, with a forklift? Your, what if you're what if you were in a, dra- a tragic forklift accident and you're now you're half you're man, fused. half forklift? Yes. You're fused to the forklift. You have to you have to take it. And if you're in Costco. You have the proper identification and paperwork that states, I am inseparably fused to this forklift, but it's still fully operational, as is my <laughs> higher brain function and my forklift certification still mm-hmm. valid. Could you pull your own pallet at Costco? I think yes. I think, I think they would have to let you do it because they couldn't, like, <clears throat> I, I think they would feel uncomfortable to stop you. I think that's I th- probably true. I think it's a social thing of. They would be like, all right, we got. I'm not gonna touch this. They this might also tape. call their lawyer, and while they're doing that, you could go pull it real quick before they, before they get. You I an think answer. the real question is who's gonna stop a half human, half forklift hybrid? Spider Man. You're, you're kind of like a killdozer at that point. So I think Spider Man is the answer to that. Is that a transit? It's just, it's, no, it's, no. It's, I'm just saying. I think that sounds like a Spider Man villain. I don't. I don't <laughs> oh, a villain forklifto. Yeah. Lifto. <laughs> yeah, <A> forklifto. <laughs> Oh my god! F, uh, yeah, F uh, F R K Lift. I don't know some. <laughs> His um, name was like Forest Lift or something. Forest Lift. <laughs> that reminds me of a really funny segue. Uh, a friend of mine once told me of. Um, he said, "Like the funny distinction between like the you know Superman villains, right? They want to take over the world. They want to. They have some grand schemes, and Superman stops them because he's Superman." Batman villains want to take over Gotham and he, you know, he stops them because he's the hero they don't deserve or whatever. Spider-Man villains are just people who don't like Spider-Man very much. <laughs> yeah, it's usually Spider-Man just did something bad or like yeah. <laughs> caused some sort of nuclear reaction. A lot of them are just scientists who made a mistake and have like brain damage now. <laughs> yeah, they, they're all people who just don't like Spider-Man very much. That's very true. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying. I'm trying to. Th- I'm going through the repertoire now. No, yeah, a lot of uh, yeah. Well, there's some of them are like who enjoy crime and they don't like Spider-Man <laughs> yeah. because as a as an inherent crime. human trait enjoys crime. Like when yeah. you a sim. What's funny is uh, I I haven't gotten to, into the Flash at all, but I'm aware that the Flash is apparently has funny villains in which the Fla- all the Flash villains are just mentally ill people oh. and they don't really cause. If you watch clips from like the Flash show, it's usually the Flash just showing up and being like, "Hello, villain," and he's like, "I'm the Seismic Man," and then the Flash is like, "Let me take you to the homeless shelter," and they're like, "Okay," and that's like, <laughs> "No, trust me, I'll look, take look you there clips. real quick." I'm not even exaggerating. There are several clips in which the Flash is taking people to the like shelters. He is helping villains on Christmas spread cheer to the children. <laughs> There is a there is like a brain I think it's like the brainiac or something. There is like a a gorilla looking brain man mm-hmm. who is like super smart and evil. But there's an episode in which the Flash is like it's Christmas and then turn convinces the gorilla man to like give a child a gift and then the gorilla man guy is like in prison. He like willingly goes to prison and then the Flash like gives him a Christmas present and then the gorilla man like cries for being so compliant. <laughs> Here's a Christmas yeah. present. That, no, it's just there's a lot of compliance. It, it's very weird. It's very weird, like villains, because of all things, right? The Flashy runs fast and stuff. Yeah. But why do they write all of his things around just you know mental health awareness? It, it's yeah. strange. 
I because how are you going to stop people by going fast? I mean, I guess you like Run there's only a them. certain threshold of like villains that can be stopped by the Flash. I don't know. I think anyone like you could just run so fast that you could just plant a bomb on them at any time. Like, do you know is, what I'm saying? Is he there's the one that can run so fast he like makes time go in reverse because he think goes so. around the planet? Yeah, in some some versions probably. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe I can. I mean, see Superman that, but... did that. Superman flew around the planet or something. That was that was silly. Well, anyway, I'm I'm so underqualified to talk about superheroes in any capacity at all. But what I am recently qualified to talk about. It's Christmas. Okay. Are you, are you Christmas certified? Are you, did you get a Santa certification? No, but I watched The Twilight Zone recently. Okay. The 19, I, I told you about this a little bit. The 1959-1960 um, Strange Things Happening series. That's what. That's mm, all that well, show yes, is. The twi- I don't know why you need to describe The Twilight Zone, but yes. Well, I don't know. I, I thought it was like a horror series like from the 60s. No, it's and just like a, wouldn't some, it be weird if this yeah, happened? It, that, yeah, literally that show is, wouldn't it be so weird if, the, if things were like this? <laughs> wouldn't it be weird if, what if what if children could vote and parents had to go to school? <laughs> in a world, you're in a dimension of sight and sound, but... And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if you heard sound but saw color or other way around? What if you... What if what there's, if salt tasted like sweet and sweet sugar tasted like salt? <laughs> there's a there's a an episode of like a, like these like people that have like these face prosthetics and it's like in a world where beautiful people are considered ugly and ugly people <laughs> are considered beautiful. <laughs> like I like the one. There's one where there's like a child and it's just like what if a child could like like delete people from existence or something. There's a oh. weird one where it's like. Isn't there also one where it's like, what if you had a child, but they were big? <laughs> I Isn't don't know. <laughs> I've only seen like 10 of them so far. <laughs> <laughs> and what they've discovered is just a discarded cigarette in the ashtray of the world known as Whoa. the Twilight Zone. Like there's always the what stupid anecdotes. I don't know if you, <laughs> like, but he just discovered that his life was a mere rubber tire on the municipal bus known as the Twilight Zone. <laughs> like... Um, oh, God. anyway, about Christmas, uh, there's a Christmas special that I saw and it's, I, I bet, I bet statistically people who are listening to this probably may even know, cause just so many people know about this, but this Christmas special is, it's this, it's this like homeless mall Santa mm-hmm. and he's the, it opens at the, the, the mall or the department store or whatever, where Santa is 30 minutes late already. And the guy, the manager's like, it's six 30. I don't know. Santa was supposed to be back at six. And like you, you cut back to the bar and it's, it's Santa sitting at the bar, six shots deep of brandy eating a tuna sandwich. And the bartender's like, Hey, you told me to tell you when it's six 30. And he just goes, all right, cool. Well, pour me another one. <laughs> like, uh, so Santa's getting piss ass drunk at the bar. So what's the twist? I mean, that well, sounds like regular small Santa. Yes, oh, of course. Uh, the, for me personally, the twist was that he showed up to work and they said, "Get to work." I know you're drunk, but get to work. Uh, they need you now. Don't let these kids get disillusioned by Santa. So, like, drunk mall Santa, I guess, falls out of his chair and they, he gets fired on the spot. Uh, the plot twist is he's leaving and he's walking around like, "I just wish that I was." I wish I could just give people a real Christmas and uh, not that he could beat alcoholism. And- <laughs> <laughs> no, he's considerably drunk, still drunk. I assume you don't get sober in, in even three hours after seven shots. Santa's walking, finds a, a bag, a burlap sack, and it can, it's a bottomless sack of gifts that can give you anything you want. And uh, it goes around and gives gifts, to, gives gifts to everybody. And then the end is him, stumbling around drunk in the alleyway and finding a magic sleigh with reindeer and being like, oh, sh- oh all right. <laughs> like, gets on it and flies away. And he just becomes the real Santa. <laughs> he, just, he becomes real honest-to-God Santa Claus. Uh, so, <laughs> a couple problems. One, he's like, I wish I could do anything about my own alcohol consumption that I caused these problems myself. <laughs> And then when he gets a bag that he could get anything, he doesn't just take more alcohol. Okay, there is brandy in the bag. 
Oh, I for will him. Say okay, that. okay. No, not not for him, but for his boss that fired him for being drunk. He gave him uh, a bottle of uh, <laughs> of cherry brandy. That seems vintage like an 1902. Ironic thing to give him. That seems like a weird ironic thing to give to your boss for getting fired for being drunk. Well, h- the boss and the cop that arrested him share it in the police station later that day. <laughs> this show what is, is the nonsense. moral of the story? Get drunk? <laughs> get, get drunk and on shirk Christmas. your work? <laughs> Uh, there was another really dumb one. I won't explain this whole thing. There was... Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There was a the, bird alert, by the way. Yes, I apologize. Um, there was a, there was another really funny one uh, of just this actor who goes back in time. It's the 1950s, and he's a, he's a critically acclaimed stage actor. And he, uh, he goes back in time because his wife died in, like, the 1920s. So he's like... I want to see my I want to see my wife again, and he like walks out a um, door, which magically transports him to 1927, and his wife and dead best friend are now back alive in the 20s, and they just hate him. <laughs> they just hate. They just hate him. Like he just he's like, oh god, did I misremember it? No. The moral of the story was don't long for dead people because if you do go back in time, they'll pretend to hate you so that you don't actually miss them. <laughs> What a great moral. <laughs> like, These morals, they're so good. <laughs> they, and like, he even says, like, they were just pretending. Like, he finds a script in his jacket that was like, it was a script. They were following they, a script. They scripted it. They, yeah, they were just, he's like, they were just pretending. When did they have they the hate time? <laughs> they really grasped the concept that he went back in time that fast to then go to. They didn't have a computer or typewriter. They probably went to a, like uh, a yeah, the library or and, and typed it out. Yeah. Uh, it was a script. The really, the really funny uh, quote from that was: "There's this, a, a poster, and it's like the the show that he acted in, and it says like 1927's big hit." And he he uh, he's literally like he reads the thing and he looks at almost right at the camera and goes 1927. That was more than 30 years ago. And I was like, watching this in 2024, I'm like, yeah, it was. <laughs> Was more than thirty years ago. <laughs> it was a lot more than thirty years ago. Yeah, God, I that show is hilarious, man. I it is compelling to watch because it's just like they don't make TV like that. It's just nonsense. But the moral is stealing <laughs> is only good sometimes. Stealing is only good in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> What if there was a world where stealing was good and buying things was bad? <laughs> That's that is like uh, well, that could be an episode of that though. Just like there was there was one where a mafia guy like his the mirror comes to life and tries to convince him not to kill a guy, and he's like, "This is the last. This is the last day of the beginning of your life, or first day of the rest of your life, or whatever." Like, don't do it. Uh, and then the moral of the story is that. He was actually all along. He was the evil version of himself in real life, and the mirror pulls him into the mirror world, and <laughs> the the good version of him walks out and traps him in the mirror, and he becomes a new man that day. He's now the good version of himself. <laughs> the moral is: don't change. The moral, just, there's a there's don't a good change. version of you trapped in a mirror dimension. <laughs> the mirror version of you will come one day, and it will turn your life around. All right, I think we've I think we've potted enough. I think we should end it here. Okay. Uh, I've been Matt, aka Matt Fondue. Who are you again? Oh wait, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter and stuff at Matt Fondue. And who are you? I am just a figure walking along the beach on the shores of a sandy oceanside known as the Twilight Zone.